Lake Minnetonka is a beautiful and historic lake located about 15 miles west of Minneapolis in Minnesota. Hi, I'm Brad Soans, a volunteer with the West Tonka Historical Society and History Museum located in Mound, Minnesota. I decided to create this video after realizing that I didn't know how most of the Lake Minnetonka Bays had received their names, even though I've lived on the lake virtually my entire life. I set out to resolve that and to share my research with others. I decided to use this historic 1909 map of the lake. That time period was called the golden years of Lake Minnetonka and was the time of streetcars, ferry boats, streetcar boats, and Big Island Park. Of course, those were modern times compared to the time of the naming of the bays. European settlers first arrived in Wyzetta in 1852, Excelsior in 1853, most of the rest of the lake in 1854, and my own German family to the area in 1856. Compared to where most of these settlers came from, this was a wilderness of trees, water, and mosquitoes. Minnetonka means big waters in the native Dakota language. After the signing of the Traverse de Sioux and Mendota treaties in 1851, ownership of the native Dakota land was transferred to the U.S. government. European immigrants quickly started moving into the Lake Minnetonka area, arriving first by horse and buggy, prairie schooners, then trains. It was not easy to live in the wilderness. This aerial view makes up a large part of Lake Minnetonka. Can you easily find where you grew up, where you live today, or where you visit? Does this help? I'll show a labeled version at the end of the video to see how much you have retained. There are two main streams of water that flow in on the west end. One is Painter's Creek, named after an early settler, and the other is Six Mile Creek. The lake water flows slowly eastward through Upper Lake to Lower Lake, then through Minnehaha Creek, over Minnehaha Falls, into the Mississippi River near Fort Snelling. Minnehaha translates into waterfall in the native Dakota language. Dutch Lake in the 1850s, a large group of Germans settled near the shores of this lake. The lake was named after them, Deutsch Lake. Years later, the lake was renamed to Dutch Lake. Lake Langdon was named for R.V. Langdon, the first township clerk. That township was Minatrista, which means crooked waters in the native Dakota language. Harrison's Bay was named after Nathaniel Harrison, who purchased property about 1865 to farm on the North Shoreline, which would later be called Three Points. He was also a shipbuilder, originally from Virginia, who was involved in the building of the Mary, May Queen, and City of Minneapolis steamboats on Lake Minnetonka. Jennings Bay was named after Frederick A. Jennings, a painter from New York, who made a clearing near West Arm. As part of the Big Woods, most places required the clearing of trees to be able to build a home or to farm the land. West Arm Bay was named for its geographical location. It includes Coffee Cove. Forest Lake was named because of its very heavily wooded shoreline. Like some of the other bays, it was not connected to the larger Lake Minnetonka in the 1850s. A channel was dug later. Let's head to the southwest. Halstead Bay was named after two brothers, Frank and George Halstead, without the second A who were known as the Hermits of Lake Minnetonka. Frank came first in 1855. After leaving to fight in the Civil War, he returned as Captain Frank. He built his new home, called the Hermitage, across the wagon trail, now County Road 44, on Upper Lake in 1868. When he died in 1876, his brother, Major George, settled his affairs and lived in the Hermitage until his death in 1902. Both brothers were a curiosity and a frequent stop for the many hotel guests touring the lake in one of the many steamboats of the time. Priest Bay was named after J.D. Priest, a landowner and farmer nearby in 1876. Hardscrabble Point is on the south shore of Priest Bay. Smithtown Bay was named after three Smith brothers who took up claims near the lake in 1854, who originally had a claim near Cook's Bay. Let's head north. Phelps Bay was named after Carrington Phelps, who was an English settler and land developer of the era. Phelps Island, also known as Island Park, or the island to the locals, has quite a history. Cook's Bay was named after Matthias Cook, 
who arrived in Mound in 1854 after having land reserved for him by his father-in-law, John Carmen. He built the first log hotel on the lake in 1854, replacing it in 1868 with a three-story, 50-room frame building called the Lakeview House. This was one of many hotels on the lake during the late 1800s and the very early 1900s. The time of the hotels and well-to-do guests visiting from the south and east was mostly during the 1870s, 1880s, and early 1890s. The Panic of 1893, which was an economic depression and which lasted until 1897, brought that era, known as the glory years of Lake Minnetonka, to a rapid end. Mound received its name from the numerous spiritual, ceremonial, and burial mounds believed to have been constructed between 3500 BCE and 1500 CE. I don't know the origin of the name Emerald Lake. I'll guess that someone thought it was a calm little gem of a lake. It provides navigation between Cook's Bay and Seton Lake. It's yet another example of a connection that was made through dredging. Seton Lake was named after Mother Elizabeth Seton, a Catholic saint who was born in New York City in 1774 and canonized by Pope Paul VI in 1975. Let's head east to Spring Park and towards Navarre and Minnetonka Beach. I don't know the origin of the name Black Lake. I'll guess that given the small size of this bay, the abundant vegetation, and frequent algae blooms, that perhaps the early settlers thought the water looked dark. Spring Park Bay was named after the city on which its shores reside. Spring Park was so named because the area was known as a spa. Carmen's Bay was named after John Carmen, one of the first settlers in the area in 1853. As mentioned earlier, he was the father-in-law of Matthias Cook. He originally laid claim to Spring Park and Casco Point. He also was instrumental in channel dredging to help facilitate commerce between the cities of Mound and Wyzetta, representing the west and east ends of the lake, respectively. He moved to Mound in 1860 and helped organize the town government. He went back east around 1868. Let's head north to Orono. North Arm Bay was originally named Haynes Bay for Ben and Lucy Haynes in 1878, before being changed to North Arm around 1888 related to its geographical location. The name Orono was brought to the area by Major George Brackett, a native of Orono, Maine, who first used it to designate the area now known as Brackett's Point. Stubbs Bay was named for the family of Henry Stubbs, Quakers from Ohio, and early settlers on the lake. Maxwell Bay was named for John Maxwell, an old soldier from Scotland who settled there about 1854. He had been a fifer in the Duke of Wellington's army, and his fife playing could be heard on a calm day by many living near Maxwell Bay. Crystal Bay was named for its clear appearance. Credit for naming it has been given to a mysterious Mrs. Templin, as well as to Alan French, a Quaker from Ohio. It is noted for having the deepest spot on the entire lake at about 110 feet. Lafayette Bay was named from the enormous Hotel Lafayette, which sat between Lafayette Bay and Crystal Bay, and which was built by railroad magnet James J. Hill in 1882. After burning down in 1897, at the end of the economic panic of 1893, other versions of a smaller Lafayette club have been built on the same site. Let's move to the southeast. Gideon's Bay was named for Peter Gideon, a horticulturalist and the developer of a Minnesota hardy apple called the Wealthy Apple, named after his wife. This bay was once called Tonka Bay. Excelsior Bay was named from the city that surrounds its southern shore. Excelsior, which originates from Latin, means still higher. Excelsior was the motto of the early pioneers home state of New York. St. Albans Bay was named by Enos Day, a native of St. Albans, Vermont. She moved to Excelsior in 1856. Christmas Lake is technically not part of Lake Minnetonka. It was named for Charles W. Christmas, the first county surveyor of Hennepin County, who platted the original town site of Minneapolis. The lake is a spring-fed lake that is known for its exceptional water clarity. It has shores in Shorewood and Chanhassen. 
I don't know how Shorewood specifically received its name. It is believed that Clarissa Cleveland selected the name Chanhassen, which in the native Dakota language means the tree with sweet sap or sugar maple tree. Let's head northeast to Deep Haven. St. Louis Bay was named by Sir Charles Gibson, a lawyer from St. Louis, Missouri, who built the Hotel St. Louis. The name Deep Haven can be traced back to the name of a train depot built near Hazen and Alice Burton's home. They were co-founders of the Minnetonka Yacht Club in 1882. Its first commodore was George Brackett, the namesake of Brackett's Point. Carson's Bay was named after frontiersman Kit Carson's brother, Elijah Carson. It was called Pig Inlet until 1876. Let's head north to Orono. Smith's Bay was named for Mr. and Mrs. Elliot Smith from Maine, the first permanent settlers on its shores about 1857. The bay is almost entirely surrounded by shoreline roads. This bay extends from Arcola Bridge to Brackett's Point. Tanager Lake is a relatively shallow lake that was previously called Mud Lake before being connected to Lake Minnetonka. Brown's Bay was named after James B. Brown. He was an early settler from Kentucky who built a small log cabin on the shore. Heading towards Wyzetta, we have Robinson's Bay. It was named after A.B. Robinson, a soldier from Vermont and an early settler in Wyzetta. Wyzetta Bay. The name is a variation of the Dakota word Waziata, which translates to North Shore. Wyzetta was settled in 1852. James J. Hill built a railroad branch westward from downtown Wyzetta to Spring Park in 1881 to Mound and Beyond in 1900, and eventually to Hutchinson, Minnesota. Gray's Bay was originally called Lake Browning. It was later changed to Gray's Bay after Amos Gray, a millwright, carpenter, store owner, and one of Lake Minnetonka's first settlers. A version of the Gray's Bay Dam has regulated the amount of water that is released into Minnehaha Creek since the late 1800s. Okay, we have covered the bodies of water of the Lake Minnetonka area from west to east. I'll show you the labeled version in a few seconds. Take a look. Next time you fly over the Twin Cities, will you smile because you can now easily locate Lake Minnetonka and its bays? Was it easy? I want to remind you that the fastest way to find our 100 plus West Tonka Historical Society created videos on YouTube is to search on Brad Stone's channel Click on my name or face, then click on videos. All videos will be listed. You can sort by most popular if you wish. You can click on subscribe and you will automatically be notified when a new video is added. Thanks for watching.